WWF in your house 12. It's time. It's time. It's time. It is. It is not Vader time. Not on this show. It, I think the plan, I think it was, you know, supposed to be Vader time, but time ran out. Hmm. That's something. It's it's fake diesel time. It's fake razor time. It's executioner time. That's a match that happens here. Terry Gordy. He's wet. Gets thrown into an ocean or something on this show. Flash Funk is wearing go-go boots. There's a lot of wackiness on this show. We got a lot to get into. So you stick your pants right there. Right here. On the Apron Bump Podcast. It's a heart is talk around and disregard it. Ship you off the ground, show you what heart is. Standing strong and proud, nothing can knock it. Let's get started. Yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is up, Al? Oh, that was so loud. <laughs> I just yelled for her. <laughs> What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing today? Welcome to the Apron Bump Podcast. I am your host, the hardest part of the ring, Powder. A lovely, lovely, hot and humid day here in Virginia. Just sticky, wet, and uh, oh, just like my pants. But yep, it's a come joke when we're five seconds into the show. Uh, we got in your house 12 to talk about today a little a little ditty provided to us by the World Wrestling Federation We are here in December of 96. This is the last WWF pay-per-view of the year and boy howdy what a year it's been speaking of the year speaking of the year of 1996 make sure you stick around to the end of the episode where the hardest promotion battle of 1996 continues where we compare WWF, WCW, and ECW. We compare each promotion against each other. We look at what the best of the year, the worst of the year, matches, in ring, out of ring, all of that stuff. There's a whole scoring system and a scoreboard and a spreadsheet. So you stick around. If you like spreadsheets, sheets, if you like spreadsheets, you're a friend of mine. Stick around to the end of the episode where this battle will continue based off of this show. We'll see if this show gave us any of the best or the worst or what have you. As of right now, WWF is in the lead with 13 points. WCW following them up with five. ECW in last place with four points. We're reaching the end of the year. The finale is approaching. So make sure you're following your boy on all the social medias at Apron Bump on everything to keep yourself abreast. Of all of the, of all of the, uh, all of the hubbub, all of the fracas that is uh, happening in, in the, in the world of the apron and bump. Oh, also join the Discord while I'm just plugging stuff. Join the Discord. Link is in the description. We have a good old time in there. We talk current. We talk retro wrestling. We talk other stuff. Just some wrestling fans pulling each other's puds. That's really all, really all you can ask for. But we're not here to talk about puds. We're here to talk about duds, which is what this show. It, this wasn't a bad show. I, we'll get into it. I think this is one of the weaker WWF shows of the year. I mean, the main event, you got Bret Hart versus Sid, which whatever. Uh, you know, Hunter Hearst Helmsley is defending the Intercontinental Championship against Mark Merrow. That's fine, I guess. Kind of a dumb finish. Um, but outside of that, we got fake diesel and fake razor teaming up to go up after the tag team championships. That's a thing. Uh, we got an Armageddon match between the undertaker and the executioner. What's an Armageddon match? You ask, well, you're just going to have to stay tuned and we'll, we'll put that into your ears what this fantastical match was. We got Flash Funk making a singles debut here against Leaf Cassidy. So it's just chock full of star power, basically, is what is what I'm saying here. So speaking of star power, you know who's a star? It's my guest. Katie from the She Leech Showcase joins me, returns to the show to talk some WWF from the new generation. You can go check out Katie as well as our co-host Savannah. 
on the She Leech Showcase live typically on Thursday evenings. Um, make sure to follow Katie on the social media. All of this stuff will be in the description. She'll let you know if uh, the show happens on any other dates. But the She Leech Showcase is a great, great weekly wrestling podcast. They talk about all the current hubbub and all the scuttlebutt going on in wrestling given the female perspective on wrestling. They have a fun time. They do fun segments. They just have a, a hoot and a holler over there, and it's a good listen, and uh, you should check it out wherever you listen to podcasts, as well as YouTube, Twitch, uh, AOL uh, streaming. I think you can find it on there, and uh, yeah, do that. And do you, you already told you to follow me. I think it's... <laughs> Guys, I think it's time to get into the episode. <clears throat> it's time. That's what the show is called. WWF In Your House 12. It's time with myself and Katie from the She Leet Showcase. So remember how I told you that I was having work done on my house? Oh, yeah. So long story uh, short. We had a vent pipe that was supposed to be on the roof that fell and crushed another pipe. So mm. we haven't had like working water for like a week. It's been really fun. Fun. Well, you don't need water anyways for anything, right? No, of course for not. All no. Every yeah. Every day of my entire existence. Yeah. No. Oh. So um my house is like a normal house and like a duplex on the bottom. That's where my brother lives. So I have mm. to like go outside down the steps into his place if i've had to pee which has been all week while i'm not at work it's been terrible <laughs> was everything all fixed uh, they came so they started cutting holes in every part of my house basically good two days ago and then they finished cutting holes today and the plumbers came today so the pipes are fixed right and restoration people are coming tomorrow to fix all of the holes that they cut Okay. It seems like you're on the way. We're on the way, but it is hot as all hell. I just want to sit and take like a <laughs> cold ass shower and I haven't yeah. been able to. You should get a uh, cold plunge tub. With, with what money? Pretty bird. They're not that, so I just got one. They're not that expensive. Hold on. Let Doesn't me, say. Tell me, me. Tell me how much. I haven't used it yet. It's still in the box, but I, say, I mean, it's probably just as hot, if not hotter down there, over there. I don't know how much work down, down here. It's it was not too bad today. It was like 85, but oh, lucky. it was. Can you just let me see the thing? OK, it was like <laughs> it was like one hundred and thirty dollars. It was more than that. But it's a you know, it's one hundred and sixteen gallons. Right. You could put water in it. You could put whatever you want in it, really, I guess. I mean, soup. But Chili, wine, wine. <laughs> make a jungle Chitter juice people. in there. I mean, it's just oh, so God, functional. Oh, jungle juice, hot. No. Oh uh, yeah, throw some burnets and some sprite in there. Maybe some orange slices. Oh, I do love a good orange slice. Do you? <laughs> Who doesn't? What's, What's your top fruit? top eight f- favorite fruits? Go. Top eight. What the fuck? Yeah. Um. We gotta start this off hot because we don't have a lot to talk about. Other than we want to talk about Flash Funk for forty five minutes. Hell no. <laughs> um, apples, oranges, grapes. Um, those are the yep. oh, watermelon. Top four. All right. Um, here we go. We got half. Mm, did you say? Did you say top eight? Because yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Then I can, maybe the thing is, should can you name eight fruits? A banana. I don't. I don't like bananas. Right. Right. Are you like really don't like bananas? Fruit. No, I'm not a, not a big banana fan. Is it the texture? It. I'm real weird on textures. It so is a yeah, weird texture. Bananas are probably the weirdest textured food out there. So I get like, it. I can eat like banana flavored stuff, like runts. Mm. Remember runts? Little banana. Little banana candy. Runts. Oh, runts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Runts. Yeah. You know, yeah. Big runts guy. Banana. Big Runtz guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first Runtz reference on this podcast, so congratulations. Oh my god, thank you so much. I mean, I got mentioned enough with you and Matt, so. Did you come up? I, I came up a few times. Whenever I do the episodes with Matt, 
I like don't remember anything that happened when it's done because we don't talk about anything, but also everything. You guys, it's a fucking roller coaster you guys go on. It's insane. I mean, he's my favorite fruit. But anyways, we got (laughs) happy Pride Month. Happy Pride Month. Happy Juneteenth, by the way, to all who. Happy uh, Juneteenth, yeah. All the, you know, I don't know, to everybody, I guess. Um, (laughs) Well, anyways, that's a couple tie ins. Farouk and Farouk and uh, Ahmed Johnson might have something to say about that later, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Uh, WWF in your house 12. It's time, Catherine. Thought I mean, is this (laughs) is this the uh, first show from this era that you've seen from WWF? I thought it wasn't, but I get when you told me I still had like WWF to watch. I was like, oh, maybe it. We've done like Attitude Era ish, Ruthless Aggression, early 2000s. Yeah, maybe that's, I mean, this was like a four year ish difference. So maybe that's what I was thinking of. And you've been watching CW. I throw a lot at you. CW. By the way, I like the picture of mid 90s wrestling that I'm painting for you because, you know, WCW is just nothing but people fighting in trucks, and then ECW is pretty good, and the WWF is, uh, you know, I don't know, Sid, Sid's wet. So that's something. <laughs> Listen, I was a day old for is that what we, is that what we figured out? Like I was like a day or uh, like a week or something old yes. for ECW. I was like five months old ish for this right. one. So we're doing great. Okay, we're so you you could you maybe could have watched this. You could have had <laughs> you could have held your head up and looked at the screen. Maybe. I probably was just rolling around and just laying there. Yeah, well, you know. No uh, that's so, what uh, some of the wrestlers were doing on this card, but yep. um, <laughs> but yeah, this is a uh, it's a weird one. This is a weird one. I will say it's probably one of the weaker WWF shows of this year, but um, Damn. I don't know. There, there's some good stuff in here in your house. It's kind of one of the uh, the B shows, but we got some debuts yeah. here. We got uh, seems like we're just kind of building to the Royal Rumble, which is the following month, but it's all they talked about. Yeah, I mean, it's who cares about it? it's time. It's it's not time. Royal Rumble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe we'll do a smash or pass on that one. Who knows? But um, but so you've seen the, now you've seen WCW, ECW and WWF from this era. Which do you think yeah. you prefer out of the three? Um, well, mm. <laughs> it's kind of a skewed uh, sample size, but well, WCW is by far the worst. Like that shit was garbage that you made me yeah. watch. Thank you so much. Um I don't know, ECW on this, they weren't they weren't terrible. I was about to say, the it ECW was, show, I think the Doctor is in, I think that was probably the best one that we've talked about. That one was a time. Like, there was some good, a lot of bad, some in between. This one I could, it's probably the same, Muscle Man is, you know? Yeah, 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 I feel yeah. it was, uh, do you, what was Too Cold Scorpio on that show? Yes. Well, lucky for you, he's also here because we got Flash Funk versus Leaf Cassidy, a.k.a. Al Snow. Mm -hmm. So uh, Leaf, old Leaf here. So they were doing the new rockers. So Marty Jannetty, he was teaming with, but Marty broke his foot or some shit. So now it's now it's just Leaf. One lone Leaf floating in the breeze. And uh, it was pre head. So Al Snow does yeah, not have, have head. Pre head, yes. Pre head, no head. Headless. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Flash singles debut. Nothing too crazy here. There are some fun, you know, spots. Uh, you know, some moon salts and what have you. A lot of flying around. Not a lot of flying around, but I guess for this era, there was some impressive stuff. But I don't know. What you what you make of this one? So when both these people came in the ring, I was like, they both look so familiar. So I did a little bit of Googling. Mm. So I was like, who the fuck are these people? And I was like, oh my God, Dougal Turpio. I watched him not that long ago because ECW, crazy. Who would have thought? Yep. And I was like, Leaf Cassidy, what a weird name. But I was like, this guy's face looks familiar. And I was like, holy fuck, it's Al Snow. Pre head. Right. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's With definitely. His Jedi braid ponytail and all. Yeah, I got a lot of questions about the aesthetics <laughs> here. So let's, so, well, I guess first of all, Flash Funk. I mean, what are we doing? Well, what are the boots? It, they're like the big, uh, 
I feel like some some girls nowadays wear them where they're like huge. They go up to the knees. There's a lot of a lot of room in between the knee and the boot. It's very really kind of <laughs> it's kind of wacky. I don't know. They're you... like weird thigh highs, but like eighties go go style thigh highs. But it didn't make sense. It's like is he supposed to be like a futuristic? Because he had like well, the, the one piece. He? He's flash. He's funk. It's not like uh, because like the entrance and everything, it's like very on the nose. It's like the exact same as Brodus Clay and uh, the Funkadactyls. But here it's Flash yes. Funk and the uh, what do they call the Funka Funkadelics or something? It's like the same thing, like the yeah. exact same thing. The hat, it's, the jacket, yeah. the cane. Um, it's giving Godfather if Godfather like dance danced. It is giving Godfather. You're right. You're not right. You're not wrong. Revolution, you know, if Godfather dance, dance revolution, he had a lot of gimmicks. I don't know if that was one of them. Maybe it should have been. Should have been. It should have been. It should have been. But uh, yeah, I mean, it it was a it was a fine like Leaf Cassidy was doing some high flying, too. I don't know if the deal here was like, okay, yeah, Leaf, he can do a little he can dive over the top rope. But Flash Funk, he can do it better because like. Al Snow had to like use the first rope to get up over the top rope, whereas you know Flash just jumped over there. And Flash, I think both guys did moonsaults, but Flash was way higher. Um, so there is some fine stuff here. Uh, uh, ultimately, uh, Flash Funk wins with the 450 splash, which you know nowadays everybody and their mother's doing a 450, but I don't yeah. think anybody at WWF at this point was doing it. So it was it was a pretty no good show in for Flash. Yeah, like, you're not having. Uh, Having uh, Yoko Zuna doing 450s, I don't think. Imagine, but, imagine though. Just think about I it. I mean, thing. please give it to me. <laughs> um, yeah. Any any other any other nuggets on this little ditty? No, I mean it was a nice, a nice little, nice little thing to start out with. Um, well, nothing like you said, nothing too crazy. You know, you gotta. It's the last pay per view of the year. You gotta like keep things kind of chill. Right. It's also December. You know, chill, chill out a little bit. It's the holidays. It's the holiday um, season. You gotta, you gotta take it down a few notches. Right. Can't, go you too, can't overshadow the main event. That's very true. You wouldn't want Leaf Cassidy overshadowing Bret Hart. I can't have it. Good thing he it's held back. Good thing. <laughs> it's because he uh, didn't have the head. That's right. He'll find his head one day. He'll find <laughs> one his day, head. Eventually. Hey, what did you think of the commentary, by the way, on this show? V- Vince McMahon, Jerry Lawler. Uh, J, uh, JR. Um, I forgot, like, obviously, like, I know Vince, like, started as, like, commentator, ring announcer. Like, I remember that. Like, I know that information. He wasn't bad on commentary. Jerry Lawler was decent. And I, I don't remember what match it was. It was something. When I when we see it, oh no, it's the next match. Jr. was pissing me off. <laughs> Jr. is so an- <laughs> heel. Jr. is so annoying. I don't need it. It's like, did he? They were like, oh, and special guest commentator, Jr. And I was like, yay, yeah, <laughs> boomer <Also>, sooner. <laughs> Terrible. I so my, my so Vince McMahon, like. Functionally, he's an okay commentator, but this dude has no banter skills. Like, no. you you throw a joke at him, it just sticks to him and dribbles off. Like, there's no bouncing back and forth between it. Like, there was one point in this first match where Jerry was like, because you know both these guys are kind of bouncing around the ring, using ropes and doing high flying moves, and Jerry Lawler yeah. is like, oh yeah, but he's like jokingly being like, yeah, back in my day, I, I, he probably learned that from me. You know, back when I was doing those moves, I was better at him. Obviously joking, but then Vince McMahon's like. Well, hold on, Jerry. I, I don't believe you used those aerial tactics back in your day. Like, yeah, that's the joke. Shit, Sherlock. Dildo. <laughs> like, fuck, man, this guy. But we should like we gotta bring dildo back as an insult. I, I'm I trying. Say, I'm doing my best. I'm calling sure. everybody I see a dildo. So as you should. Speaking of dildos, uh, we got a couple of them here. <laughs> okay. So. You're, you're maybe a little, you're slightly unfamiliar with this era, maybe. Uh, were you f- aware that this was not the real Diesel on Razor Ramon? You know, I Because <laughs> they hit it pretty well. No. Like, 
whoever the fuck Razor Ramon was supposed to be did not look anything like Scott Hall. Fake Diesel had like a shitty Cher wig on. Like, how dare you? <laughs> you think that was fake hair? <laughs> was it fake hair? I don't know. Kind of looked you, fake. You do know who Fake Diesel is, though, right? I don't think I do. It is a mayor of Knoxville County. It's Kane. Get the fuck out. Yeah, is it yeah. Really? Now that you know That's it. That's why it was so shitty. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, it's very like the way he moves and his noises he makes. Like now that you go, if you go back and watch it, you'll be like, oh, of course, it's fucking. Yeah, it's exactly what I would Glenn. just go back and watch. But I think I think I might have to like YouTube it, not watch the full thing because God. <laughs> you don't want to watch a fake diesel, fake razor match twice? No. <laughs> And that's, well, that's the thing that was pissing me off about this because JR, for some reason, had the biggest hard on for fake diesel and fake razor. I was like, guys, you can't fool me. Well, because we're <laughs> Hall and, uh, no, yeah, Nash, yeah. Hall and Nash were in WCW, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. At this time. Yeah. So I think. I, just, I don't know, because I wasn't there. I don't know if the idea was to like because it's like a parody it's like okay i get it haha ha, they're fake guys but they're like giving these guys a title match so it's like are we trying to just create i think maybe the idea was to be like oh kevin nash and scott hall weren't the talent it was just the characters that we gave them so we can just throw any guys in these characters and they'll find success success too you know spoiler alert they didn't no uh <laughs> but they're, they're fighting for the tag team titles as a team against the team of owen hart and british bulldog um and yeah, so and by the way, Jr. is hard on his erection. If you want me to explain his erection, it's because he in kayfabe, well, I guess in real life, in reality, because he was with talent management. He brought these guys in fake diesel, fake diesel, fake razor, <laughs> fake diesel, fake razor, brought those guys in. And he's like, okay. so they're his boys, basically. And he wants them to succeed. I don't know. I don't know what the Not end game is. Again. I don't know if Jr. like manages them at some point. He essentially Ew. is from the commentary desk, but uh, nobody needs that. No. <laughs> uh, on the other side of the coin, Owen and Bulldog, they've been embroiled with a feud with Stone Cold Steve Austin, who is uh, on the come up here. So Stone Cold was feuding with Brett. So now so they're kind of intertwined there. We're kind of building to the Heart Foundation, you know, Brett, Bulldog, Owen, uh, Pillman. So they're kind of focused on them. And it's also it's two heel teams facing each other here. Some random AAA guys come in during the match. This is kind of this is pretty shitty. Okay. I don't know. What do I'm you think? Gonna <laughs> because what in the fuck? You have these two dudes from AAA and they 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 say it on come there. They're like, oh, it's I don't remember what the names were. It is. Uh, I had to Google it to remember. It was Cy- Cybernetico and Piroth. Yeah, them. Uh, you just had them like walk through the door because you know it's in your house you know they had to, they had to come to the door or whatever right. and respectful no you doorbell their though feet. yeah no doorbell they did Very a little rude. like they did like the the secret knock and they knew so like they're like ah it's fine it's a good point but then you have them stand there one ripped his shirt off <laughs> for no reason <laughs> <laughs> they were out there for a minute minute and a half possibly two minutes if we're being generous just looking stupid and then they're like i gotta go like what it was like even before the match started, I think. So it's like what it'd be one thing it if they like came out right there trying the to distract. Yeah. If they're like trying to distract a team to like start a feud with them. But they literally, like you said, they just came out. One guy ripped his shirt off and then they <laughs> skedaddled. It was like, what are we? Uh, you took a flight from Mexico to do that. I don't know. But I'd be pissed as fuck. You have me fly out here to stand there, rip my shirt off and. Hey. Do what? Intimidate the other teams? Get the fuck out of here. You don't, you don't think Cybernetico is intimidating uh, Kane? Fucking prime phys- physical, you know, eight feet tall, 400 pounds Kane? Uh, no. You might have scared this doofy Razor. Whatever this Dude, guy this Razor was ass. I forget his name. Because he, he popped up on an ECW show I covered too. Like just as himself, and then it was. You're like, well, that's not you. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, you know, not impressive there either. So, um, good, good. 
It is interesting to see the AAA kind of crossover. You know, in modern times, as we're recording this, there's a lot of, you know, yeah. NXT and TNA and the Japan crossover, Forbidden Door. The uh, what's yeah. the other one? The Prohibited Portal. Like yeah. It was interesting to see, you know, 96. There was some uh, they were flirting yeah. with some crossover. So that was kind of fun, I thought. Definitely caught me off guard. I was not. I'm, and again, like just random t- a triple A tag team who they like kind of like said something on commentary and then they were like oh it's like two matches in one but the one dude just like ripped their shirt off and then just they just stood on the the ramp or the entrance way and right. did nothing so it wasn't really like two matches it was just one match and two dudes standing there menacingly i mean it literally just paused the match like it didn't like it, it, it did didn't get involved <laughs> it was just hey they're here one guy's shirtless now all right, let's get back to having a shitty match. It just was the thing. It's like, it's like howdy partner. <laughs> but then you know, after the, after the AAA fellas leave, uh, Stone Cold comes out, makes a bit more of an impact. <laughs> he uh, what, what does Steve do? He comes out there, old Steven. I think Bulldog <laughs> attacks him. I think like Steve just comes out and Bulldog starts fighting with him unprovoked, which I thought was very rude. So funny. Steve Austin said shit was on site this pay per view. <laughs> 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 to multiple people. <laughs> yeah, he was not having it. Um, he came out twice during this match, technically. He was all, I think he was in the main event, too. Steve was, yeah. uh, was like, well, goddamn, I'm not on the card. I'm going to be a part of the card. Here's my cat, Poncho. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. Love his cats. Love his cats. So great. You know, I did not love was this match. But uh, <laughs> Vince on commentary is even like, oh, these, you know, the fans don't seem to care who wins because cause they're too bad guys teams yeah. so it's like why would the crowd cared care and uh i don't know eventually bulldog goes for a power slam on the razor razor counters goes for the razor's edge but owens here spin kick to fake razor and then bulldog with a roll up for the win so they retain their titles but then steve's back and he lays out bulldog so <laughs> Not going That's what on I here. mean, just like on site. It, they're just like, yay, we win Stone Cold out of nowhere. After <laughs> already being taken to the back 20 minutes prior to this, comes yeah. out like through the fucking crowd or whatever, chop block to the knee, mm. and then runs away. I don't think he ran away. I think it was kind of a tactical retreat more so, you know? Okay. He's a Stone Cold didn't run away. He Mm-mm. power walked away. <laughs> See those? You see that vest? You see those jeans? That's not a man that runs away from things. This is pre double knee brace, Steve. I believe. Mm, yeah, pre pre knee brace, pre neck break. Um, when yeah. did he break his neck? Ninety eight. Ninety seven, I believe. SummerSlam. Yeah, we're so close. I think. Yeah, yeah, ninety seven. Um, we're so, so we're like we're uh, right. eight months away or something with the fellow that that was in that match. So fun foreshadowing. Yeah. We're all having fun. And they like teased some like animosity between Owen and Bulldog for some reason. Yeah, so I don't know. I think because Brett and Owen here still don't like each other and they had a match on Raw leading up to this. But Brett was also feuding with Steve and Owen and Steve kind of teamed up for a bit to a, a beat up on Brett on Raw, but then Bulldog's like, I oh, you can't trust this fella, you know? You know, you know how he talks. And uh, yeah. mm-hmm. there's a lot of moving pieces there, but ultimately, I think we're just building to the hearts coming together and uh, doing Canadian yeah. things. So, oh, Canada. Oh, Canada. Oh, nation. The nation of dominations <laughs> here. Take. As JR says, taking over the cyberspace of America Online. Do you ever talk to the Nation of Domination on AOL? Katie? I was five months old, Kyle. No. <laughs> you, you didn't have a, an account? <laughs> no. You weren't on AIM. Imagine. <laughs> Baby Katie doing this like a cat, like on a keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely me. Did you have an AIM name, though, eventually? Uh, no, by the time I started, like, understanding, like, what, the inter- like, I had an older brother and an older sister, so, like, mm. my sister had AIM, so I would, like, kind of see what was happening, but by the time I was, like, old enough to do everything, they were like, yeah, AIM's not really a thing anymore, so here's Facebook. Yeah. I was like, great, Facebook. <laughs> Man. 
be a yeah. you're a baby. You're a baby. I forget I, that you're. I turned twenty eight five next years month. ago. Oh, get the walker out. Fall Fuck downhill off. from there. <laughs> Stop! I'm already having a crisis that I'm close to thirty. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's getting closer to death. But yeah, N- Nation of Dominations here. They're uh, I don't know what they're saying on the chat rooms, but they're, they're just there bullying these people. <laughs> really, just nasty emojis they're throwing at them. I I can only imagine. <laughs> a lot of thumbs down emojis, you know. Exactly. Tomatoes. Yeah. Oh, it's brutal. It's brutal out there. <laughs> well, they they don't stay on the computers for long because, uh, well, first of all, Vince McMahon's in the ring and he's uh, welcoming Ahmed Johnson, who has been out with an injury, a kidney injury after getting kicked in the kidneys by Farouk. So Damn. Ahmed's out here. He's coming out here. He's 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 saying stuff. Uh, we got the Royal Rumble coming up, I guess. Ahmed Johnson and Farouk are going to have a match at that pay-per-view. And Ahmed's like, man, ever since this injury, I lost my girlfriend. I lost my car. I lost my house. But I have all you fans. Which <laughs> like it's a country fucking song if I've ever heard. <laughs> I feel like fans would be like the number four for me if I, on that list. But um, <laughs> but I don't know. What'd you make of uh, Ahmed Johnson here? Initial it, thoughts. I don't- I don't know, like, if it was, like, Peacock or, like, just the mics, but, like, I feel like I couldn't really, like, fully hear either, like, when people were getting announced, I couldn't hear shit, and then with this, I couldn't fully hear, and I, mind you, I tried putting subtitles on because a bitch likes subtitles, and Peacock said, no, thank you. And didn't let me put <laughs> subtitles on. <laughs> they saw Ahmed Johnson coming out, or like, I don't know. They just put their hands up like I tried putting them on mine. from the jump, and they said no, no. I got like one like thing from commentary on subtitles, and then they mm-hmm. didn't work. And I was like, this is disrespectful. I don't know. Well, Vince on commentary, I think he mentioned a few times that they were having like transmission issues during the show, which I noticed that too. The sound was a bit wonky at certain points. Commentary felt off. It's like they were figuring out sound and. All that stuff. But yeah, the, the sound was like a bit uh, plugging yeah. things in and blowing in them, putting them back in yeah. like that whole deal. <sighs> good. Like a good game cartridge. Hell yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, but then Farouk comes out or comes through the crowd, the whole nation of domination. So Farouk, uh, the fuck are their names? So there's Crush. Who else is out there? The two rappers. I forget what their name. Peachy 13. I think their name is. I don't know. What? But uh Farouk, he's he's yelling at Ahmed from the from the rafters. Basically, he says some very unsavory things towards Ahmed Johnson. I think he calls him an Uncle Tom at some point. He does says uh, says something. Farouk says something about like I'm going to create my own race, so I'm not the same one as you or something like that. It was very uh, which is wild. <laughs> it's been crazy. Ninety six like, man. What a time. That's a wild statement to be saying, Farouk. Damn. It was. Man, I mean, it's we're, we're we're not even really in the attitude era yet, but man, we are dipping our toes in there. They're they're trying. Gee whiz, gee whiz, happy Juneteenth. Um, but uh, yeah, then Ahmed's like, hey, go, 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 or something like that. Gets a "You're going down" chant from the crowd, which the crowd obliges. The crowd loves this Ahmed Johnson, and I got to—I mean, I, he's a he's a charismatic bloke, whatever he's saying. So. I mean, you're going down is such a choice of a chance. You <laughs> it's know? pretty cool, right? <laughs> you're going down. It's like a bunch of like fucking middle schoolers like around a fight happening. Like that's the <laughs> vibe it gave. I feel like so. people don't say you're going down anymore. We need to bring that back. That and dildo we need to bring back. <laughs> Start calling everyone a dildo. You're going down. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, say it like that too. You gotta have some some gravel in your voice. Ah, finger points. Bring yeah. back the finger point too. Finger guns need to come back too. I feel like you don't see a lot of those anymore. Bang bang. Speaking of bang bang, we got some bang bang shrimp here. We got Triple H, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Oh yeah. Defending his Intercontinental Championship against Mark Marrow. With Sable by his side. I mean, probably the match of the night, I would say. I don't know. Do you agree or disagree? Um, yeah, I can agree with that. 
not too shab, not too shab. You know, baby fit, you know, young, fresh face Hunter Hearst Helmsley with Marcus Merrow on the other side to to get an intercontinental championship, the working man's title. I mean, yeah. They're fighting over Sable, I think, because yeah, Triple E or Hunter Hearst Helmsley came in uh, <laughs> with <careful>. different people <laughs> with uh, Sable as his like valet, and then Mark Marrow stole her from him. There was a, it was a silly Tell backstory. Bullshit. <laughs> Goes back to WrestleMania that was like fucking seven months before this. It's like at some point get over it, you know. <laughs> uh, but I guess there's you know they're still fighting for the IC title, so it was fine, but. Yeah, I thought it was you know fun. It's probably the you know maybe the most high energy match of the card. You got you know Frankenstein's, you got tilt to whirl backbreakers and moon salts and ref bumps. Earl Hebner getting a little beefy so with uh with trips here, but I thought it was fun. What'd you think about it? The ref bumps were in Triple oh, H. Wow. I'm sorry, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Mm. The balls on this man consistently assaulting. A referee, not just once, many a time mm-hmm. during your match. But like, it's also like the smart heel thing to do. You're the champion. You get disqualified. You win. Mm-hmm. Technically, like you keep your title. Cerebral assassin. It was a. We didn't even talk about Gold Dust coming out. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh Goldie, Goldie Locks. Goldie Locks, Gold Dust. Which I've seen enough Dustin Rhodes in every <laughs> variation. Man, you've, seen, you've seen the whole journey. <laughs> I've seen it all. I've seen King of the King of the Road. I've seen Gold Dust. I've seen The Natural. Mm. I, I've seen it all. I've yeah. Will they call him the Natural? Shut the fuck up, Justin Roberts. That was pretty good, Justin Roberts. So you did pretty good. <laughs> Will they go? All right. Um <laughs> Yeah, Goldie's out here. So I think I don't know if it happened in this match or if it was leading up on one of the Raws or something, but I guess Triple H was getting a little getting a little fresh with Marlena, who is the dame of Gold Dust. I was like, I don't um, know who that is. Marlena, otherwise known as Terry Runnels, you may know her as. Oh, okay. So you know her mm, now. Yes. Yeah, big, <laughs> big old hooters on Marlena. But uh, Jesus <laughs> she's, <laughs> she was not here, I don't think. I mean, Goldust was all business. No wig, no glitter. Well, maybe some glitter. Always glitter. It's Pride Month. Always it was. glitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but it was on site with him. As as was with Stone Cold. Gold on site for uh, everybody in this fucking pay-per-view. My God. I mean, it's just chaos. By God. By God. He also, he attacked everybody. <laughs> he didn't just attack Helmsley. He attacked Marrow, too. Like... You just want what was what was the game plan here, Dusty? Baby Dusty. baby Dusty. <laughs> he's uh yeah, he's he goes both ways. So he attacks everybody. He attacks I mean, both people. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah, we get the uh, Earl Earl Hebner and Triple H, they would have beef for years, you yeah, know. Ever. <laughs> Into the two thousands. They didn't like each other. So it was funny to see them like even early on. Like, I think at one point, Triple H has, has a chair and he's trying to hit Marrow. And then Hebner grabs the chair and Triple H is like, oh, 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 oh. Um, sounds just like Ahmed Johnson. He does. It's crazy. I, I, crazy. I didn't realize everybody sounded the same. It's, you know, every, in the 90s, everybody was kind of the same person, I think. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the match is underway. Mark Marrow hits a Frankensteiner from the top rope, goes for his shooting star press. But Triple H shoves. Earl Hebner into the ropes to knock him off. Of course. Um, Merrill with a beautiful looking moonsault. He like bounces on the top rope, spins around and hits it. So yeah. some good stuff from old uh, marvelous Mark here. But uh, when does when does Earl get knocked out? So, yeah, Merrill goes for a clothesline. But I think Triple H ducks and Merrill hits the ref. Uh, he rolls up Triple H at some point. The ref kind of gets awake. He counts to two. Uh, then he kicks out and then Earl falls asleep again. Uh, <laughs> and this is when gold dust comes out. He lays out both guys. Like you said, he takes the IC belt clocks them both. And uh, ultimately Mark Merrow is able to get back in the ring, but triple H does not. So Mark Merrow wins by count out, but triple H retains the intercontinental title. 
Uh, but Meryl hits him with the wild thing, which is what he calls the shooting star press afterwards, which theoretically sends the crowd home hat or doesn't send them home. Well, maybe send some people. <laughs> I was home. like, there's. Uh, <laughs> well, that's enough. that's all I needed. Let's skedaddle. Oh, let's wrap it up, folks. But yeah, there was some there was some interesting stuff here. But the finish was a little goofy. Yeah. And then Goldust came back out and started beating the shit out of Hunter Hearst Helmsley, like in the, the walkway. It was, mm. it was a time. Don't talk to his lady. Don't talk to Dustin's lady. I guess I guess not. I mean, but like, are you Mm-mm. talking to her, Goldust? Because like, she can she can be in better hands, probably. It's a lot of heavy breathing in her ear more than talking, I think. But, <laughs> <Don't like that. laughs> you know, <laughs> Goldust. Most, most women, if not all women, do not like that on a daily basis, just like an everyday life. <laughs> Just out of context, just like in the kitchen, like, how are you? Do you no, need any no. help? With, do you want me to take out the trash? No, I would need a divorce. <sighs> well, anyways. <laughs> I um, hope everyone enjoys listening to us. Do you, ever, do you ever think about how much saliva is on the microphone? Well, I have a, uh, I have my, my guard here. So. All right, but there's there's got to be saliva on the guard, no? I mean, probably. I'm very passionate when I speak sometimes. Right. Maybe it's moisture wicking. Uh, that's, you know who else is moisture wicking? You know, you know who else gets rid of all that moisture <laughs> is Doc Hendricks, who is backstage, otherwise known as Michael P.S. Hayes. He's back there. He's interviewing Sid, who's going to be defending his WWF title in the main event. We go back to earlier today where uh, there was quite a fracas. In front of the arena. Uh, uh, Shawn Michaels attacks Sid. You know, before the show's happening. Because they, you know, know, Sid took the title away from Shawn. Sid beat up Jose Lothario, who was uh, Shawn's trainer. And uh, so Shawn and Sid are fighting. But then Brett comes in to help out. Because Brett doesn't like Shawn. So Brett's beating up Shawn. But then Sid's like, hey, mind your business. Mind your beeswax. Brett, so Sid attacks Bro. Brett. So it's just a three-way fracas, really. Um, three-way fracas. That's <laughs> that's what this whole pay-per-view should have been called. It should have been. It should have been. It would have been it's better not, than it's, it's, it's time. time. It's three-way fracas. By the way, the show's called It's Time, which is Vader's catchphrase, and Vader ain't even on the fucking card, which is very I- silly. Yeah, like I didn't think about that until now, but I was like, yeah, like it's time, it's time, it's Vader time. Yeah, like I know that, but right. then I was like, huh. So well, that's a missed opportunity. <laughs> so the story goes: I think the initial plan was for Vader to essentially be in this in Sid spot here, but I guess oh. Sean didn't like working with Vader, and so that's the whole thing. But I guess they had <laughs> posters. Sean. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. <It's> brick. <laughs> We got prime prick Sean here later in the show, but prime dildo uh, Sean, come on! Oh, he, oh, he is a he is a twelve inch dildo. Is that a big dildo? I don't know. I'm not in the dildo market. Um, I'm pretty sure there are like tentacle fucking dildos. Like I think anything could be a dildo if you're brave enough. Tentacle dildo. <laughs> Let's see here, <laughs> Amazon. What? <laughs> oh. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Let me. Let me. I can't wait. I can't wait. How do we how do we do this? OK, do that. We do a little bit. Of, do a little bit of that. Not the cold plunge. Uh, Not the cold plunge. Look at these. Yeah. I mean, those are those are, are real. People buy them <laughs> on Amazon. I mean, $20. I mean, you can have a tentacle. Choice. I got to know what the reviews are for this. Well, 4.4 stars. I mean, that's not bad. 8.7 inches. I mean, medium and large. Okay. Uh, Black, lava, colorful. Lava, come on. Let me get that lava dildo. Okay, we don't need to. All right, that's enough of that. (laughs) I need to. uh, I'm not going to bookmark that. Definitely bookmark it. Well, it's getting me all hot and bothered for this. Our Armageddon rules match. Armageddon rules. The Executioner versus The Undertaker. Yeah. Boy, howdy. Armageddon rule. What's your favorite Armageddon rules match there, Katie? I 
didn't know. I like I know Armageddon was a pay per view. Mm, also a movie. A movie, yes. Um, probably the name of like a band. Oh yeah. Probably. If not, Miss Opportunity, right there. Like that's a rock band if I've ever heard it. Um, this was basically just like a no DQ. <laughs> so I, it was like. Yeah, it was like basically a no DQ match, but also kind of a last man standing match. Oh, yeah, because like what you had to pin your opponent and then they had to stay mm-hmm. down. Like, Which what is, is the fuck? <laughs> so that's kind of like a Texas death match is gen- that's generally what yeah. that is. Um, I've seen a few of them in ACW and I think AEW's done a few of them, AEW's maybe done a few and people got mad because they didn't get it right. I think they if they like flip flop with the rules. So yeah, like you said, you have to, it's a last man standing match, but you have to get a fall on the guy before the ref starts counting. But there was only one fall in this match, so it's like, why not just make it a, a no DQ match? I don't like, know. Like this was a like, where is my three stages of hell? Like that's the shit. Mm. I I don't want this bullshit. Three stages of hell. Taker and the executioner and three stages of hell. Come on, it writes itself. What would the three stages be? Um, steel cage. No, you gotta end it with a hell in a cell. Always. Okay. Okay. Always end it with a hell in a cell. Um, you can have the first one just straight up be like a no DQ, like fuck around a little. Second one can be like a first blood. Everyone loves blood. Mm. But what um, if you what if you get bloody in the first match? Well, boy, howdy. <laughs> You just, gotta bleed again. <laughs> you just gotta bleed again. <laughs> bleed a little harder next time, guys. Yeah, you know, I, I, yeah. what if a first blood match, instead of the first person to bleed, you have to like make them bleed a certain amount? You know, like uh, like uh, like in some reality shows, you gotta like fill up a certain like a flask up to. Do you watch Big Brother by any chance? Um. I watched the challenge. So like uh, big brother adjacent. Adjace. Yeah. Um, but like, see, I thought saw in like one of the traps you have to put a certain amount of like body fat in a thing. In order oh, to be saved. I like that thought. I, I like more movies. <laughs> I mean, like one chick cuts this match, her fucking then. arm off to like get the right amount of weight needed to free yourself arm i guess yeah like i that's what that's what the second okay so the first stage of the three stages of hell it's like normal no dq whatever second stage you have to cut a body part off of your phone okay. the third stage hell in a cell <laughs> <laughs> so after that we, can, we keep going okay yeah yeah no yeah you have to three stages kyle so you could you could theoretically win the match, but be sans a body part. Yeah, I didn't it, like. You could just be a finger. Like, it doesn't have to be like a whole arm or leg. Oh, or an ear. People get ears ripped off all the time. You know, it does sound ridiculous, but they did have a match where you had to take out the person's eye to win. So I guess it's not that far fetched. Fuck, no way. That was the Seth Rollins uh, Rey Mysterio match. Oh. Right, wasn't that the thing? You have to, what was it called? Eye for an eye match or something? Oh. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that happened. Yeah. I don't care what I talk about. COVID was a weird time. COVID was a weird time. <laughs> <laughs> so was this match. Yeah, the executioner is here. Terry Gordy, which I don't know if you're familiar with him. I don't know if he was on the ECW show we talked about, um, but he did a little stint there. Uh, he was a, a fabulous free bird. He was big in the, you know, the yeah. early days. I knew of him. I don't think I ever watched anything with him that I knew of him. Well, don't let this be your representation of Terry <laughs> Gordy, because this is yeah definitely the tail end of his uh, career here uh, as the executioner. I mean, he's so we got Undertaker and Mankind. <clears throat> Their feud still going on. Mm-hmm. Paul Bearer turned on Undertaker, aligned with Mankind. And uh, the executioner is kind of like a hired assassin uh, from Paul Bearer. So they got a little faction going on there. Got it. Um, so take her at executioner going at it. And uh, I mean, execution His his look here. I mean, the mask. 
It's like it's like he didn't have a Halloween costume, so he had to just like kind of use what he had around the house to like make one. It was uh It looked like the executioner type person from Shrek. <laughs> so I guess yeah, I guess he nailed it. He, put it that way. Um yeah, it's just a lot of brawling. They fight on the outside. They fight to the stage. Somebody gets thrown through. Was it Mankind? Because Mankind comes out at some point. It becomes a handicap match. Yeah. Oh, 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 Mitchard gets thrown through the stage. And uh, they start tearing that. They bring the house down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they really brought the yeah. house down with this one. Yeah, no, they said it on commentary, too. They're like, oh, they're, bugger, oh, they're bringing the house down. <laughs> Fuck up, Jacob. <laughs> oh, I no, thought they, they were tearing the house down. I even wrote that down. Tearing the house down. Right. All right. They blew the roof off that place. The roof was non existent the first time. Yeah, there was no roof. <laughs> there was no roof. They busted down the door. That's what they did. They did. I thought they were going to push down the whole thing, which that probably would have so killed a bunch of people. But uh, <laughs> unfortunately, that did not happen. Listen. Um,. I watched, I was at a wrestling show on Sunday and it was a steel cage match and they were taking apart the steel cage and the cage, one part just fell out of the audience. Damn. So like everyone was fucked. Right. To my knowledge. Like, right. But did you die? You know, like that would have been, been like the sentiment of if the house was taken apart fully and mm. possibly may or may not have fallen on people. It was the 90s. Nobody probably gave a fuck. They were probably like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Houses fall on people all the time. I mean, what are we? It's Armageddon rules. What'd you expect? Screws fall out all the time. The world's an imperfect place. Exactly. Screws Perhaps. fall out. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Who says that? Uh, Bender. Screws fall out. When they shut the door, like towards the beginning of the movie, uh -huh. and he's like, screw fell oh, out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Screws fall out all the time. The world's an imperfect place. When the, when I said the that, teacher, I've yeah. said that three times today. <laughs> this You're, being uh, the he's your soul animal soul animal is that the soul, so soul person soul what is the phrase he's my soul spirit soul? animal spirit wow. soul animal That's such an he's asshole my, well cause like yeah yours is a pretty bird <laughs> I can't whistle <laughs> wait can you wait you really can't whistle I have to like I can't do the finger thing I don't know. I don't I've, understand. I've tried. I've seen videos and I still don't understand. <laughs> oh, there's a little queef that on my finger. Um, <clears throat> speaking of queefing, we got a queefy oh, match right here. <laughs> so they're still fighting. They bust down the door. They're causing a lot of ruckus. A fracas, a ruckus. I mean, it's everything. Um, they fight back to the ring. Uh, they, they so security comes out and they want mankind out of here because look it's i know it's an armageddon match the the goal was to kill your opponent but we gotta have some rules here so uh <laughs> fucking ground basically but it's not a buried alive you have to kill him but it's not buried right alive. which by the way it's interesting that we had a buried alive match and now we have this match it's like you would think the buried alive match would be the top of the i don't know yeah also how many times is paul like realistically in the entire career of Undertaker with Paul Bear by his side, how mm. many times has Paul Bear betrayed Undertaker? At least twice. At, At least, least twice. twice. That's what I was thinking. At least. Because this and Kane. Fake Diesel. Yep. <sighs> oh, Paul Bear <laughs> and fake Diesel. <laughs> you know, you're never going to look at fake man. Diesel the same. <laughs> fake Diesel. I got old. Um, but yeah, I, I, I got a lot to say about these security guys. Um, so they come out with they're, they're all in like bright blue shirts. One of them has Zubaz pants on, which is a choice. <laughs> I think, what can we be professional a little bit? Like, it's like, can we can we show some demeanor here? Like, put us put a slack on, put put two slacks on, a pair of slacks, <laughs> even. Um, no, multiple no. pairs of slacks if if need be. I like a good slack. They got yeah. Mace. Mace, not uh, the wrestler. They they all uh, have not, Mace. Not Mace. Like <laughs> Which I think I think modern day security can learn from this. You know, this these 
shoddy security guards on Raw nowadays. They're just like, oh, whoa, whoa. It's like a force field around the guy. They're hey, not doing anything. The huh? security may or may not have died on Monday Night Raw. <laughs> <laughs> well, they fucking deserved it because they're terrible <laughs> at their jobs. Jesus. Well, they, they all mace mankind. And, uh, Which I feel like is excessive. I don't even need it to. I don't even think you need it to. Yeah, you, can, you have eight guys there. Maybe just, I don't know, all grab them at once. Pass the mace around. <laughs> like, <laughs> guys, is one man, one very deranged individual, I understand, but for mm. fuck's sake. And then he's maced. And then they put a straight jacket on him. It's like, at what, po- at what point are we just torturing the fella? <laughs> it's like, I was more interested in that than the actual match. Oh, because wasn't it during this time, Taker and the Executioner were outside? They're lollygagging at the concession era- area, so they fight to the back, they walk up the stairs, it, and then it cuts to the ring, where they put the straight jacket on Mankind, and then it cuts back to Execute and Take, who are now outside, and you have Executioner rolling down a concrete hill into water. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what when happened? How did we get here? <laughs> like, when they showed, like, the exterior shot, like, towards the beginning of the pay-per-view, I was like, I kind of want someone to get in the water. Not knowing uh, what would happen four matches later, but the rolling on the concrete? <laughs> God damn. <laughs> was the best part of the match, I thought. And no, honestly, it definitely was. Well, this and then part of the finish. I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, well, I, when this happened, he rolls down the hill. I'm like, oh, is that how they kill the executioner off? I guess we're just done here. He drowns. He can't swim. Whatever. But then he like stands up. Well, then, it's yeah, because it's, it's two inches. It's that's like a fountain outside. Yeah. Um, they go oh, back to fun. the ring. Mankind's still on a straight jacket because that's what a straight jacket is. Uh. And security, uh, what, are, what does security, security undo anything? I think they're still there, though. Uh, executioner comes running back. So I guess he can swim. Uh, attacks the Undertaker. And they get back in the ring. And <laughs> Undertaker tombstones him. But I thought there was some pretty good garnish on this tombstone. <laughs> why, don't you, why, don't you, why don't you fill in the audience? The water. So Undertaker lifts up the Executioner for the tombstone. For those who right. don't know. Tombstone, you are upside down. 69. 96. 69. Standing 69. And as he lifts him up, a shit ton of water just from one boot <laughs> comes out <laughs> from the executioner. And that part had me dying. I it was like, this, this is the best part of the match. Because, like, in theory, it could be like, okay, maybe they did a pre tape. Of him rolling down into the water, but nope, he's still moist. That means he had to get out of the water whilst. Okay, so Undertaker throws him down. Undertaker goes back to deal with mankind. Executioner is just like doggy paddling in the water, hanging out. And he's like, oh shit, I guess I gotta go back. And then just squeaky boots all throughout the <laughs> fucking arena <laughs> to get back. And then boom immediate tombstone all the water just gushes out like a little waterfall and then you lose congratulations executioner you did great what a way to lose a match just <laughs> be, i would have water to quit. works i would have to quit wrestling forever hey, if, my, is this this could be I the last of him last match ever i want it to be let's see what a way here. to go out water Joy out the boot water out the boot um let's see here 97 okay he's there in your house is time okay he, yeah it is at least in wwf it's his last because he leaves oh, in no, january that's, that's the best that's the best way to go out man what a way what a way <laughs> um but yeah so that all happens unfortunately Absolutely. Oh, and I'm just yeah. if you're like a fan, you're you're back. Maybe you're trying to you're at the concession stand. You're maybe trying to buy a corn nut of some sort, maybe a pop, a soda pop. And then you yeah. just you turn around. And you see this stupid asshole in a mask and a hood go <laughs> with his stupid boots and he's just slipping and sliding. 
<laughs> you know what I thought about? When he tumbled down, he probably accidentally waterboarded himself because there was like no like <laughs> mouth hole. And if there was, I don't remember seeing it, but like, he probably basically got waterboarded for a hot second. At least in the yeah, does he have uh let's see here. He has eye holes. That I know. Imagine if he didn't though. <laughs> Actually that would make it better. Um, let's see here. There is there is a nose hole. It's just the eyes. I was like, but like how big is the nose hole? Like just two little slits? Here it's um I need to see. We need to visual aids. I'm a visual learner. So he's got like the is that one? actually what he I don't remember him looking like that at all. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't think it I came out with this, uh, this, this, uh, what do you call this? The, uh, the, the scythe? scythe, 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 executioner on Tumblr. He's on Tumblr. <laughs> oh, uh, cool. <laughs> he probably blogs crazy shit. I would imagine so. If he was still alive, but you know. Well, hey, rest ghosts in, can tumble. <laughs> rest in piss, executioner. Um, but anyways, so that happened, unfortunately. That and, uh. Well, that, that sets us up nice and nice and tidy for the main event. We got oh the WWF championship is on the line. We got the champion Psycho Sid defending against the hitman Bret Hart. What are your thoughts on Bret Hart? It's like nowadays, like as a person, as a, I guess, just overall, Bret Hart. Uh, he despises Goldberg, and I love that about him. Because I also <laughs> despise Goldberg. <laughs> Bill Goldberg and I got beef. Respect Big Bill. Oh, he's not Big Never. Bill anymore. No, that's a different person. Big Berg. Big Berg. Mm. Ew. That would no. have been if he was Big Berg instead of Goldberg, he'd be still going today. No. And the fact that he dead ass said he wants one final match, I was like, mm, how about no? Just one more. Just one more. Just one more taste. That needs it. <laughs> No, he can fuck right off. But, like, I respect the fact that any chance Bret Hart gets, he talks mad shit about Goldberg. <laughs> Every, Bill Goldberg's not even a part of the conversation. He's like, you know, I can't fucking stand Bill Goldberg. <laughs> and he's, he's, I think he says, like, his full name. He says Bill Goldberg. He doesn't say mm. just Goldberg. That's right. how you know you really hate somebody. Like, you use their full name all the Government time. name? Mm. Yeah. Government name. Mm -mm. Surprised he doesn't bust out the middle name of Gold. Probably. Are you looking up the middle name? Gold yeah, Gold. I have to know. I, we need what, to know. What would you guess? Probably like Matthew or like a Martin, someone with an M. Scott. Ew. William Scott Goldberg. William Scott's a actor, isn't he? <laughs> William Sean William Scott, I think is his name. Oh, yeah, mm. that's what I'm thinking of. Oh, I'm glad you I'm glad you like figured that out though. We're, we're there. Oh, uh, yeah. what's his name? Stifler? Stifler, yeah. The rundown. Dude from, um, ugh, the, you know the rundown's called Welcome to the Jungle in the UK. Why? I don't know. I was watching uh, I'm always on TikTok. I was watching a TikTok and it was these two guys trying to like guess movies based off of like three actors in it. And it was Sean William Scott. Um, Dwayne and then some other actor in the movie and it was they said Welcome to the Jungle but they showed the rundown cover and it said Welcome to the Jungle I was like whoa wait that's weird and all the comments were like this is the rundown question mark because <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I love that movie it's one of my favorite movies like oh yeah it's that, a great movie and then oh, what's the other one he did around that time Walking Tall Oh, mm, what a good one. I've never seen Walking Tall. Really? I think you'd like it. Whenever I see it on TV, I'm like, I'd rather watch the rundown. And I just watch the rundown. So. <laughs> well, I think you should check out Walking Tall. Dwayne's a, Dwayne's a badass with a uh, two by four. Jim Duggan? Yeah, very uh, inspired. Yeah. Mm, Dwayne the Rock Duggan. I like it. Dwayne like the it. Rock Duggan. <laughs> <laughs> He's a menace. <laughs> well, there's no two by fours here. Unless you count well, Sid. HBK's there too. <laughs> I have so many questions about Jonathan here. So he's <laughs> he's got the uh he comes out 
is it like an all black? He has like the black jeans, the black shirt, the black blazer. He's got some scruff going hair looking luxur- luxurious, though. 10 out of 10 hair on the Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Oh, 90 Shawn Fox. <laughs> oh, yeah, he does. You bet your bottom yeah, dollar. <laughs> the sunglasses. I mean, this this is a machine. Cocky son of a bitch, but I love it. Oh, he's got every every he's pill you can find cocky. inside him. Yeah, he's, oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> he is buzzing like a bumblebee out there. And, uh, vibrating. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so we're building. So I don't know. I, I so this is my first time watching like this era. So I'm not sure where exactly in the timeline we are at. I know at some point, Sean, he like loses his smile and then he leaves yeah. for a bit. I think we're approaching that. Kind of okay. approach approaching DX era, Sean, but we're we're it's like a bridge between that and his you know Uber babyface era before that. So yeah. it's a very weird kind of him and Brett are, are mad beef, more beef than a deli shop between him and Brett at this point. And we're on site, still a year away from Montreal, and then Sid's there. He's wet. He's big. <laughs> um, Sid's just there. I'm a big Sid guy. I mean, he's. He's the man. When did okay? So you this this is also why I like coming on the show because I like asking you questions that I have whilst watching these things because of stuff mm-hmm. that I know. When in relation to this does he snap his leg like a fucking pixie stick? Mm, I'm sorry, I think like that's a glow like stick. that's like three or four years after this. That's in WCW. Um, so this is, oh, this is this is post leg break. No, after it's this is pre leg break. Oh, this is pre- okay. This is pre leg break. That's what I thought, yeah. but I wasn't a hundred percent sure. That's why I wanted to ask. I want to say it's like two thousand, maybe ninety nine. That happens. Um, God, really? I thought it was. I don't know. What, I guess in my mind, what? I thought it was. Well, you have the Google right there. Kyle. My Google is is earning its money on this show. <laughs> this is why um, I come on the show. We have to get your Google some money. Sin, sin was the pay per view. When did that happen? I think that was a later sin. one. Sin. Ooh, like Sin. Two thousand one. Two thousand. What the fuck? Time's not real. Holy shit. I guess they only had like one. Yeah, January of one. Wow, that's like the wow. very end. Right in the, very, right in the very beginning of January. That sucks. Imagine <laughs> breaking your leg. You break your leg, and then the company you broke your leg for goes out of business in two months. Fuck me, man. I would. I would just have to break both my legs. <laughs> <laughs> just take the other one. Why don't you? <laughs> Honestly, damn, that's crazy. I really thought it was like in the 90s. He broke his leg. No, no, he's uh, still fresh, still moving and shaking till still two uh, very functional legs here. Well, he's got two legs. He's got two legs. And does he know how to use them? I don't know. But uh, yeah, it was I don't know. This is kind of what I expected. He got big, big, meaty Sid, Bret Hart, kind of a style styles clash between the two that's a move. um that is a move and uh i don't know what you what you what you make of this one i didn't think it was a bad match like nah if if hunter hurst helmsley and mark merrill weren't on this card then yeah this gets match of the match of the night for sure mm-hmm. but like there's just so much happening uh, stone cold shows up on site because of <laughs> fuck everybody uh hbk gets his hair stuck in the headset a few times which i thought was just funny yeah uh it's all just like a culmination of like we know the real beef is brett and sean like we know that sid's just here and he just happens to be champion which like if i was sid i'd be high key pissed i'm like i'm the fucking champion of your company and you guys are more focused on this bullshit Uh -uh." Mm. so he's champion man he doesn't care He's he's champ and he's just like I gotta deal with these two old bitches. Come on, come on. That title looks super small in his hands, by the way. <laughs> well, because he's a fucking massive man. He's a like, big boy. He's like what? Probably like six five. I would guess taller. I'll guess six six eight. I maybe say, I was gonna guess six seven originally, but I thought that'd be too tall. Psycho Sid. He is six nine. Holy nice. shit. Jesus Christ, he's massive. Sydney Raymond Udi. 
That's, ew. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, you're not down with the Udi? <laughs> she no. said, ew, how dare you? I don't know. It's just like a, that, like that string of names didn't sound good together. I don't know. Sydney Raymond Udi. Sounds, <laughs> it sounds nice. It makes my mouth happy when I say that. <laughs> Sydney well, Raymond Udi. Well, it does sound like three individual guys. It's it's three people. It's <laughs> three people on shoulders to create. <laughs> it's like fucking Very. kids in a trench coat. <laughs> it makes sense. It makes sense. Very <laughs> elaborate coat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, but yeah, Sean's here on commentary, and it felt like he was all, all, all like more of the focal point here. Uh, mm-hmm. Brett's this match is a lot of just like Brett dissecting Sid with all of his, you know. Submission holds and execu- excellently executing Sid and all of his yeah. various uh, appendages oh, and whatnot. Um, let's see here. So Sid at one point goes for a power slam on Brett, but Brett counters and sends Sid right into Shawn Michaels, who had gotten on the apron. Um, or was that before? No, I'm sorry. That's, that did not happen yet. So, so yeah, Brett like- shoves Sid into an exposed turnbuckle which Britt had torn off earlier in the match, showing how big and bad Sid is and what he has to do to beat him. Uh, shit, thro- shit. Sid throws shit. out a choke <laughs> shit, throws out a choke slam uh, for a two count. They fight to the announce tables. This is the point where Sid pie faces Shawn Michaels, which Shawn doesn't take too kindly to that. I feel like his headset probably gets uh, tangled in his fluffy hair at that point. The beautiful man. Um, They get back in the ring, and this is where Brett whips Sid. But Sid counters and whips Brett into Sean, who knocks Sean off the apron because he got up there because he was pissed at Sid. But Sean gets knocked off the apron. Goes like head first into a chair, by the way. I don't know if you caught that. It was a pretty nasty landing. He set up the chair and was like, Brett can take it. He was like, you know what? Like, he backed up. He was respectful about it. He was like, go ahead. Do what you gotta do. Mm. Go ahead. And then, go ahead. And then pie face, he gets the fuck up and he's like, oh, hell no, not not today. Mm -mm. And that that chair that he strategically placed there. Was his downfall, like cranium to the fucking chair. That's the moneymaker, too. That was fucking hurt. At least I think it was a cushioned. It was was the era of cushioned chairs. I guess at some point, like the outside was metal of it, like it was just a metal rim and then the cushion. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'd prefer to not be pl- plummeting into a chair generally. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, on my, on my typical know. days, yeah, don't most days. Go head first into a chair. Unless I'm feeling spicy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, in the ring, Sid is able to hit the power bomb onto Bret Hart, which looked pretty nice. Uh, Sid, old Sidney, gets the win, retains his title, and uh, then Bret. Just kicks the shit out of Sean after the match, which is fun. Like with the hockey punches, rips Sean's shirt over his head and starts. <laughs> being, he it's just like beats the shit out of him. Like, God damn. Well, a fun way to end the show. You, you got some hostility a brewing between Sean and Brett. Sid's champion. He's vascular. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's where we leave it. Yeah. Yeah, what a what a a show. That's time. (laughs) Right? Because it's the end of it. It's time. That 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 was time. (laughs) It's not time anymore. Time's up. Time's up. It's probably what I should have. That's that's probably what I should have gone with. I'll cut you out. Cut that out. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, it's time. If you had to give this uh this show a grade of S to F, what do you think you would throw at it? Well, sure shit ain't an S. I'll tell, I'll mm. tell you that right now. Damn. But it's also not an F. You know, I've seen worse. WCW. Yeah. Um, I feel like I can confidently give this like a B plus. Mm. It's pretty generous. I I mean there was there was some good, uh, quite a bit of bad, but like. 
the good, I think, overweighs the bad that kind of happened. And, like, we got some funniness out of it. Water gushing yeah. out of the boot? Like, <laughs> I'm never going to see that in a match ever again, probably. Now that you say that, now it's going to happen tonight on Dynamite or whatever. Yeah, if it fucking happens tonight on Dynamite, I'm a psychic and I should go play the lottery. Please. Please do. <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess yeah that the water squirt does uh, add a letter grade to fake it fake diesel fake razor the triple a guys for no reason like mm. it's just funny <laughs> this was a very mad libs show it's like here's throw some mask guys shirts off water yeah. squirt fake d's yeah it's if mad libs was a wrestling show that's that's it but house, it's time um, but yeah, if Mad Libs asked for an adjective for you would be great. Speaking of great, the She Elite Showcase is pretty great. Y'all should go check her out once again. Katie, thank you for coming on, watching some old wrestling and uh, all that shiz. Where can everybody find you, listen to your show and all of that stuff? Yeah, uh, well, of course. Pretty word. Thank you. Oh, also, you did not call me any potato related thing this episode. I've been thinking because I think I've used all of the potato dishes that I know. <laughs> uh, here, do your plugs and I'll, I'll look up some potatoes. OK, OK. I'm glad we can work this out now. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Uh, yeah. You can follow me on Twitter. Katie Raslin 13. The link tree in my bio to get everything. She leads showcase. Uh, we typically go live on Twitch twitch.tv slash she Elite showcase and youtube.com slash she Elite showcase thursdays 6 15 p.m est most of the time except tonight we're actually going after dynamite the occasional wednesday night show uh we do a lot of stuff over there you can check everything out vlogs story times savannah has a show on the channel we do a bunch of stuff i'm also always on smacking it raw and getting offed so you can check those out as well I think that's all the plugging I can do for my shows. You sure? Uh, okay. Well, thank, <laughs> thanks for <clears throat> thanks for coming on, Funeral Potato. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> what is a funeral potato? Yeah, what it's is just, a funeral potato? It is a traditional potato hot dish or casserole that is popular in um, in the American Intermountain West. It's called funeral potato. Just, yeah, it's served at potatoes. <laughs> what the fuck? Why is it its own? Uh... It's just potatoes in a dish. But what is it? Okay, it's it's hash browns or cubed potatoes with cheese, onions, cream soup, uh, sour cream, butter. It sounds like uh, like potatoes. I don't know. Like, why are we uh, inter? What is the Intermountain West? Is is, more, is probably the bigger question. <laughs> We're gonna go down a rabbit hole here. So this is like Idaho, Utah. Idaho, famous for the potatoes, of course. Oregon, Nevada. We'll we'll do a whole other did episode you say on the Nirvana? funeral potato. <laughs> what, what did I say? I thought you said Nirvana. I was like, what? Oh, I might have. I said Nev- I meant to say Nevada, but you know. These, I mean, if uh, you said a tomato, potato, it's all the same. You think Kurt Cobain had uh, funeral potatoes at his funeral? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Once again, thank you to Katie from the She Elite Showcase for joining me on this episode. Always a good time with Funeral Katato. Go check out the She Elite Showcase and Katie wherever you listen to the podcast, as well as YouTube, Twitch, all that stuff. Find the description. Find the description for everything you need to follow her. Go give her a follow, a subscribe, a like, all that stuff. Do the same for me. And that leaves us with just one thing to do. And that's to yell at Bartholomew. Hit that jingle, you sexy son of a bitch. WCW, ECW, WWF, who's the hardest promotion? Eric or Vince or Polly? I think we can agree, though, it's mostly shit. Alrighty then. The hardest promotion battle of 1996 continues. If you are watching on YouTube, I'm sharing my screen so you can visually watch along but if you are in audio land i will describe this for you like i said in the open here the current score wwf with 13 points wcw has five points ecw has 
four points. How are these points gained, you may be asking? Well, we'll look at each promotion, each of the three promotions. We see what was the best or the worst from an in-ring perspective, or from the roster perspective, and also from the out-of-ring. We'll get into each individual criteria, but one, the first criteria is uh, pay-per-view slash special event quality. And the promotion with the best overall average grade of their shows from this year gets six points. Currently, WWF has that, but let's see if that changes at all with this. So what we do is grade this show. In your house, 12, it's time. From a scale of S to F, S being one of the best shows I've ever seen in my life, F being a show where I'd rather stick a lava-colored, tentacle-shaped dildo in my anus. Um, three of them. Three of them is, is what I'd rather do. So, um, so that's what an F is. <laughs> so... Um, STF, what are we thinking? I'm thinking at the most it's a C. I'm leaning towards D. I'm thinking maybe like a D plus. Because there was not, I look, the best thing on this show is Triple H and Mark Mero, which was just okay and it had a shitty finish. Storyline, from a storyline perspective, there wasn't a lot of progression. I mean, I guess you're kind of moving along the Sean and Brett feud. Um, Taker and Mankind are kind of spinning their wheels, it seems like. Flash Funk's here, that's cool, and it's kind of whatever match. The tag team division is in shambles. Yeah, I'm thinking D. I think we threw a D at this one. So we're not ending this <laughs> this year super strong. We just had World War III from WCW get a D. But let's see what that D gives us here. So we look at each promotion and what they're averaging. And WWF still has the highest average grade um, at about a C plus or so. So WWF maintains that six points for the best overall average pay-per-view grade. This show was not the best of the year, was not the worst of the year, because we've had a few Fs in there, right? So WWF still holds on to the best pay-per-view of the year with WrestleMania, so they get those two points. WCW holds on to the worst of the year with Super Brawl, so they maintain that negative one point. So no changes yet. Let's look at in-ring. So our first criteria here is in-ring. So just overall, you know, just... Based on where we're at here in 96, which promotion has given us the best in-ring product? Now, we are currently tracking WWF, but this show wasn't superb from an in-ring perspective. So the question is, is WCW or ECW giving us anything better? WCW has some good, like, we've, you know, I feel like I say this every time. WCW has the Cruiserweight division which is pretty, pretty reliably good. Outside of that, like not a ton of great in-ring stuff happened. That's not really where their bread is buttered. Um, is that how you use that phrase? Probably not. And ECW is kind of in a weird. Hmm. I can't say, I can't say that there would be any reason to say WCW or ECW is doing any better because it was a solid show from an in-ring in -ring perspective, I guess, right? It did nothing really blew me out of the water. I think in-ring, I think WWF holds on to this for now. So they maintain that four points. Best match of the year, Sean versus Diesel at In Your House 7. Nothing on this show is better than that, so WWF keeps that two points. Um, worst match of the year. Also, WWF from In Your House 7, Ultimate Warrior versus Gold Dust. I mean, that fake Diesel, fake Razor tag team match gives them a run for its money. I think it was just kind of generic and boring more than anything, rather than a bad match. The Armageddon, Armageddon match. Again, like the match itself was, it was like, it was just a brawl. Like, it wasn't. It wasn't offensively bad, in my opinion. So I think, yeah, it's definitely not 
worse than Warrior versus Gold Dust. So yeah, WW I mean WWF holds on to that anyways. So they keep that negative one point. Ross, now we're looking now the next criteria. We're looking at the roster and the star power of each promotion. Of each promotion. Um what changes have we seen? Um, not a lot of not a lot of shuffling of the roster since we've last looked at this. So I have no reason to really. I guess you know Flash Funk and The Rock are there, but there's they haven't really made any noise yet. Stone Cold is is on the rise, but nothing super major has happened with him to where I would say WWF has overtaken this. Because right now we're tracking WCW as the best roster. Just the breadth they have. They have a really dense main event scene, even though it's kind of monopolized by Hogan and all that. But you got your Macho Man, you got Piper, you got Flair, um, Luger, Sting. Like There's a lot of star power there, as well as the Cruiserweight divisions building itself. You got... You know, DDP's on the rise. Yeah, I think WCW still holds on to the best roster, so they keep that four points. Wrestler of the year, Mankind. So he's he's losing grip of this. I gotta I gotta be honest. I think Starcade is gonna be very telling, because right now, so who who is in the running for Wrestler of the Year is basically what I would ask myself. So you got Mankind. You could throw Sean in there, Sean Michaels. I don't think Bret Hart's been there lo long enough this year to be in the running, not over Sean. Um, but from other promotions, Rey Mysterio, you got you got to think about him. I mean, he's just consistently putting out bangers, not only on the pay per views but on the TVs. Um, just an incredibly influential style. Just a very unique at, at this point in '96, you weren't seeing that on mainstream US TV. So, Rey Mysterio's got to be in there. Um, who else? Who else? You could throw like a Benoit maybe or a ECW. Does an ECW have anybody? You could throw a Shane Douglas maybe. I think his lack of in ring quality probably hinders him there, but. Um, the Eliminators. I think Mankind holds... I think it's Mankind and Rey Mysterio. I'm going to be honest. Or Shawn Michaels. I think it's Mankind, Shawn Michaels, Rey Mysterio. I think those are your top three right now. We're going we're gonna, to... I think we're going to keep it on Mankind for now. But we'll see how Starcade pans out. That might be the tipping point for Rey. Because Mankind hasn't really done anything... Of note, since the um, the Mind Games match with Sean, you know, he had an okay match with Taker. He had an appearance on this show. But like I said, they're kind of spinning their wheels a little bit, kind of becoming one note. But we'll, we'll keep it with Mankind for now. But that's one that's kind of shaky. That's, that, that'll be a, a good one for the, uh, the finale when I have you guys give your input. See if you agree or disagree. But worst wrestler of the year, Ultimate Warrior. Um, you know, do we put Fake Razor and Fake Diesel here, like as a ta as a tag team? That's something to to uh, consider. I might even put put out polls, you know, leading up to the finale, but. Ultimate Warrior, and I've said this before, he like when he the impact that he made on this year was bad, but it was a pretty limited amount of time. It was like March to June or something like that. Like it was only a few months. So like it was undoubtedly bad, but is it was the longevity significant enough to warrant a worst wrestler of the year? That's the question. There's other guys in the running. Who are other guys in the running? Maybe Hogan. Uh, maybe... Who else? Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Who else? Who else is bad? ECW. Anybody bad in ECW? has got to be, right? 
Or is there? Maybe not. I'm sure there's somebody. I just can't think of anybody that would be like offensively bad. But like, who, who's a stinker from ECW? Axel Rotten, maybe? No, he's not that bad. I don't know. Maybe ECW doesn't really have any. Well, again, well, I guess we'll just keep it Warrior for now because nobody else is really coming to mind. But again, that's maybe something we'll take a deeper dive later down the road. Um, so the last criteria, we're looking at out of ring. So this is the gimmicks, the characters, the promos, the storylines. Best overall, who are we thinking? Um, currently, we're tracking ECW as the best. I don't think this show would put WWF above them because, again, Undertaker and Mankind still in the same place. The main event scene, you got some movement. You got some seeds being planted with Brett and Sean. You got Sid being solidified as the top guy. Steve Austin and the Hart Foundation is starting to build. So, again, that, that's something that I don't think is going to get really cooking until like early 97 at least. So at this point in time, I think ECW is still the best. Now we do have the NWO and WCW, which we're currently tracking as the best overall um, or the best singular storyline going. Which I would still. I think that still holds strong in WCW, so they keep that two points. Worst character storyline, Jerry Lawler. Um. I mean, do we throw the executioner here, huh? It's not going to change the points because it's still going to be WWF, but that's something that might, that might be on the short list of potential uh, winners. Uh, but again, like the executioner, he just made such a small impact, whereas Jerry Lawler had several feuds that just were just, I mean, the ultimate warrior and Jake Roberts and just his overall commentary and like, it's just bad. So I think Jerry Lawler holds on to that for now. So he keeps that negative one point. So no changes to the scoreboard, all that to say. Um, but we have one more show here, Starcade from WCW. We'll see if that makes any changes to the scoreboard. And even if it doesn't, after the Starcade episode, which will drop here in a couple weeks from now. Um, so that show or that episode will drop. And then separately, I'll be doing a live show. Not sure exactly when, um, but it'll be maybe like a week or two after that. We're going to do the finale for the hardest promotion battle of 1996, where we're going to take this and I'll give more details as we get a little closer. I'll post it on social media as well, but I'm going to allow you guys to send in your input. You can send in video clips, audio clips. You can just send me DMs or leave it in the discord or whatever it is, right? I'll take all of those inputs. You know, if you send me like a video or an audio thing, I'll play it on the show um, or I'll read your, your input on the show. Like I said, I'll give more details as we get closer, but I'll let you try to sway me because um, I mean, we've been looking at this after every show. So I think we've taken a pretty comprehensive look at, look at this. Um, but maybe I'm wrong somewhere. Maybe there's something I'm missing. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a perspective that I need, and that's what you guys are for. So, um, but make sure you do that. And yeah, I think that's about all I got for you guys today. That's about all Daddy has for you. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Always a pleasure coming on here and laying my voice inside of your ear canal. And um, yeah. I think that's where we'll leave it. Appreciate you guys. Love you all. Big old smooches all around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm hard. Yeah. It's a hard is. Talk around and disregard it. Ship you off the ground, show you what hard is. Send you strong and proud of me. And I guess let's get it started. It's the hardest. Talk around and disregard it. Ship you off the ground, show you what hard is. Standing strong and proud, nothing can hide this, this is all it is.